Hi, I'm Kristen Van Slyke, and you are listening to The Movie Raid. It's time for the movie raid, and tonight's victim is screenwriter Christian Van Slyke that has done many films such as Discreet. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fantastic. So what have we been up to lately? Oh, I have several projects that I'm working on for the upcoming year, including three that are going to be filming within the next couple of weeks, and then Discreet is filming next weekend. Having today's cinema, when it comes to characterization, uh, there's a lot of alternation, you know, between ethics and, of course, even the gender and so forth in, in terms of where where to put them at and stuff. But do you think that these altered personas might actually seep into the indie projects and even affect you as the artist the, in terms of the characterization themselves uh, as far as writing it? Absolutely. Indie is my style, but I definitely draw influence from... If, if anything from, let's, let's say, in the larger known studios that are basically rearranging certain things, especially in well-known films that they're swapping, let's say, you know, a certain gender that you know, we're all used to, but do you think this, is, this might actually seep into indie filmmaking to where it, it's going to show that in indie filmmaking as well over time? How would you define between the uh, dis- display and the, the presentation? Generally, I'll try to formulate a really good log line that'll draw some attention. Do you prefer that to be purely in the filmmaking as far as indie goes? Do you think in terms of writing these stories out, writing in this to where you can feel more comfortable, or would you rather actually hook up between mixed studios? Are the larger budget ones, do you think that might affect you differently? Oh, the larger budget? Absolutely. I generally prefer to write for indie budgets, but I do have a couple of uh, larger budget projects that I'm currently writing and are involved in, and they're definitely a lot more work. I would say that I prefer to write in the indie industry. Why would you want to write specifically in the industry? Is this because you get the, that better creative freedom or the flow or maybe just more, more time and less frantic, so to speak? Yes, absolutely. I would have to say the reason I prefer indie is because of that freedom, exactly as you put it. I have the freedom to basically write pretty much any direction I want. There's no box. Some of my favorite movies are now cult classics, They and they had the smallest budgets, and they didn't really involve themselves in larger studios, if you will. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. That's just, you know, my personal preference. But um, when you get involved with the larger budgets and, you know, bigger names and such, uh, sometimes there's parameters you have to stay within and a box that you have to write in and do rewrite so that you fit inside of that box, you know. And so, for the most part, I enjoy trying to stay outside of that box. Now, do you think these studios, especially the larger budget ones, especially the well-known ones, do you think are in cinema today? Do you think that they're starting to homing a little bit too closely about trying to make filmmaking a little bit too, uh, as far as the story goes, relevant? Yes, yes. I would I would say that the larger studios are most definitely trying to gear towards whatever the current uh, modern situation is and appease the public yeah, to what they would want to see in here. In a way, it seems like it could actually almost harm the viewership in terms of their opinions and, and judgment. I mean, that's something uh, of these issues that can be discussed, but this is becoming more and more of an issue almost each and every year because you can see it in terms of the filmmaking itself, how the story is going. You can tell that they're trying to slightly or subtly implicate these kind of situations in the film, even if it's a, a superhero film or anything like that, and then it kind of ruins that effect in terms of of being in the story itself because now you know this is something that's happening you know living a fantasy with kind of like understanding the situation so to speak oh yeah yeah I would have to agree a lot of times you can tell when you're watching a movie that they're trying to almost sway or persuade people to view things a certain way or little tidbits of information regarding current situations on how particular studio may think or on others to think etc and do you protect yourself when, when you're hired to do a project within the, the film uh, of indie making do you protect yourself making sure that this is something that this stays within your region within your way of of how you want to present this to the public without having to alter because of of the things that are going on with the the well-known studios that what they're doing now oh absolutely um when i'm approached about a project i try to get all of the information up front what the plan is, what the goal is, what, you know, they're looking for, and how we're going to reach that goal. I try to get all the information up front so that when I start writing the project, it doesn't all of a sudden change and there's headbutting potentially regarding how a situation is going to be handled. But yeah, I definitely do my best to make sure that I take on projects that, you know, go along with 
my own belief system, if you will, for lack of a better term. We have been doing a lot of uh, collaborating lately, if you happen to notice on my IMDb page. I've been co-writing some things because I believe that, you know, we can learn a lot from one another, from other people in the industry. So I started collaborating, writing some projects with people. And so oftentimes, behind the scenes, sometimes we'll disagree on certain things and we have to be able to work through that and work it out. So when I'm going to collaborate with someone, I also do research that way to make sure that, hey, are we going to get along if something doesn't line up with one of the ways we're, you know, trying to sway this thing. Now, having been hired doing multiple projects by the same company, is this really a best way to almost get your recognition a little bit easier out there? That way you know that here's this one company that has trusted you to do the projects at hand, and it's not so much as, as far as the screenwriting process, but as fact that you, you've been hired to do these projects, is this a little easier for you rather than having to freelance to other companies in the indie? I enjoy both for different reasons, but for instance, I'm the staff screenwriter for All Dog Entertainment and Sandra Williams and I, the uh, owner, she and I get along so well and everything is working out so well that why would I want to hinder that relationship? Let's just keep moving forward and just kind of take it as it comes. And we have, you know, three short films lined out over the next three, four months or however long that we're going to be doing together. And that is, it's almost like guaranteeing that projects are going to get finished because starting from the screenwriting side, it's much more of a challenge to get a project finished than it is, say, you know, if you're working in post-production. I would say it's definitely a lot easier to get your work out there if you're staying with the same company because you're working together, you're moving forward together and making sure that everything comes into fruition, you know. But on the freelance side, you know, it's kind of at your own pace, it's your own schedule and you get to do things your way. So things can move quickly or slowly depending on your willpower, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> would focus and and as well as the effort, would that actually shift differently if you were to be hired from another company, even though you're working within this company as well? I'm actually a screenwriter for Garage Studio Production Services, so I'm working with two companies at the moment and working on some personal projects as well. Sometimes it's a challenge to focus in on a project when I'm doing multiple projects at once, especially for a different production company. I do my best to set a schedule. I'm a schedule type of person, so I'll work on this project one day and this project the next day. It's much easier for me to shift the focus to wherever it needs to be that day. Uh, if you were to actually be hired by, let's say, a very well popular studio, and it, let's say you're satisfied with its history or, or its current, let's just say, their business. How would you take effect with that if you were to be hired to do more projects? Would you still stick with all these uh, main companies that you are working with now, but still working with these, or would this also almost hinder relationships if you were to, let's say, cross over, so to speak? I don't think it would hinder. I would be where it would lead, and I would discuss it with the current people that I'm working with and see what they would like to see happen as well. You know, I wouldn't want to blindside anybody that I'm working with. Oh, hey, I'm taking on 15 projects with this huge studio company. <laughs> so I would definitely discuss it with them, and we would talk through it and on the business end and see if that's something that they would be willing to work with me through and kind of take it from there, you know? And in some aspects, do you think you have to learn a little bit uh, quicker through the responsibility through these business ventures, almost when it's come right in your face at sometimes before you can fully understand it? Or is it best for you to take your time really to dive into some of these project and find out what what it's really about before you just get signed sign the sign the check and that's it i try to be proactive for me personally it's always best to do whatever research you can and be as proactive as possible and go from there i would have to say that i probably would prefer to do the research beforehand and that way i'm not blindsided <laughs> oh without a doubt and the fact is have taken that responsibility on your own behalf without having it be taken it for you, do you think the responsibility sometimes it needs to be a little bit almost hold your hand type of style in some of these mediums, or do you think you need to take full responsibility without any kind of help? For me personally, um, I would say that I'm, I'm pretty driven when it comes to film and getting projects done. I don't think that I would need to be micromanaged, per se. If I had questions, I'm definitely not afraid to ask. I don't want to get down the road and still have these questions and do something incorrectly for the production company. So I, I tend to be driven and motivated and start the project. And then if I have questions, I'll definitely ask 
as I go. I would say I, I definitely don't have to be micromanaged or anything like that. And especially working with other people, especially when, when you're working with under uh, some people that might be a little bit more driven in terms of being the leader. Do you think it's best for you to be the leader, even though you might be working on somebody that has a different leadership? I work well with others. I guess it would be case-by-case situation. Regarding the writing, if I'm the only screenwriter, then I would definitely say that I would have the most knowledge regarding the screenwriting portion, perhaps, you know, and that would be a leader in that particular area. As far as, you know, the whole production, you just collaborate with whoever's in charge of that production. And the fact is you might be working with other screenwriters as well and, and having to share the same type of experience and same type of the same ways of how to make a story work or, or anything like that. It can be challenging on its own because you got two different opinions or two separate directions. You have your direction, they have their direction, and having to collaborate can be uh, very difficult on its own, even though you might be very respectable toward each other. The fact is, you're an artist, they're an artist, but they're trying to get two different visions out and having to combine it together. I can see it being that such a challenge, I mean, having to work that out and having to get out there on paper within a given time. Oh yeah, two minds do not think alike all the time, you know. Uh, It's definitely good if you can find someone that you think similarly to, and that's definitely what I try to do when I'm collaborating with other writers. But yeah, there's instances where we disagree and we kind of have to take a step back and find a happy medium, as you would in any situation, really. Go ahead and plug in any websites or anything that we can check out right now. You know, IMDB, I'm on Instagram, and I have uh, Facebook for all of my shorts coming up. I have uh, seven shorts that are in pre-production and a couple of features that are in reproduction, Crossfire, Chronicles of Gabriel, Legend of Wisteria Falls. There's Facebook pages for all of those right now. Cool, very cool. And there you have it, everybody. That is screenwriter Kristen Van Like.